Hello everyone, welcome back to YK Reviews. Merry Christmas. Hope everybody's having a great day. If you are watching this and you are celebrating Christmas, hope you've got everything that you wished for. Hope that today is going well. As you see in the thumbnail, you see in the title, we're gonna be ranking all the Die Hard movies for Christmas Day, since the debate of Die Hard is it a Christmas movie or not. So let's get into it here. <laughs> Now before we get started, if you are new to the channel, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. We've done a whole bunch of tier ranking videos. I just recently, yesterday, posted the Arrowverse since it was the end of the DCEU. Just posted the Arrowverse tier ranking video so you can check that out. If you're not celebrating this, I hope just in general you're having a great day and happy new year as well. Done a whole bunch of like Marvel, TMNT, Spider-Man, all sorts of like tier ranking videos. So if you do like those types of videos, definitely consider subscribing. We also do movie reviews, weekly entertainment news videos. So tons of stuff coming onto this channel. So if you do like that type of stuff, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit that notification bell. So let's kick things off with this tier ranking video and show you the screen right here. Okay, now as you see here, there's only just four categories because there's five movies, so we don't need to have a big tier list. So we've got basically a yearly watch, extremely enjoyable, good as like a one-time watch and just a miss altogether completely with just five movies from the Die Hard franchise. Now, most of them you can't consider a Christmas movie, but there is a debate for the first one, even the second one, I would have to say, but the first one is like the big debate of it, whether it's a Christmas movie. I'll get into it when I do talk about the first movie here, but we'll kick things off and we'll go backwards from the most latest movie all the way back to then the original one, just because I think we can all agree that similar to like the Indiana Jones franchise and trilogy, that the earlier ones are a lot better than like the most recent ones. So we'll kick things off here and also timestamps are going to be in the description down below for each movie. So anything in particular you do want to check out, you want to hear my thoughts are about, timestamps will be in the description down below. And also just bear in mind too, this is just my thoughts, my opinions. I want to know yours in the comment section down below where you would rank the Die Hard movies, whether A, you think it's a Christmas movie or not, and which one's your personal favorite too. Let me know all of that in the comment section down below because we're kicking things off with the latest one, the one that came out in 2013, which was 10 years from now, but it's the last one in the franchise. And that is Die Hard, A Good Day to Die Hard. Okay, so I gotta be honest, when it comes to like this movie, it feels like the last two movies was just sort of a catch up with John McClane's kids. So like the previous one is with the daughter, this one is with the son. But in terms of like the storyline, I just was not that invested whatsoever with it. I enjoyed the chase sequence, like the car chase sequence in the first act when they were in Russia, but then the whole overall story, I genuinely felt bored throughout the whole movie. It just genuinely did not feel like a die hard movie whatsoever. And just like the story beats of plot, even the performances too, just felt very phoned in and just the characters themselves feel like they didn't even want to be there. So I just was not having a good time with this movie whatsoever. Like I said, I felt very bored through it. Even like the whole third act two, the twist, the turns, the big reveals, I just honestly had like a blank look in my face throughout the whole movie. And towards that third act, I was just sitting there just waiting for the whole movie to be over, checking how long there was left in the movie. This is the shortest movie in the whole franchise, coming in around an hour and 41 minutes. and. When you're comparing it to like the earlier movies, which are over two hours, that just breezed by. This one felt like it was dragging a lot and it's definitely one of the weakest in the franchise. The whole father-son connection, I think, worked a little bit when they were bouncing off one another. It's pretty much a like for like for the, the previous movie because the previous movie had his daughter involved. This one is his son involved and his son is part of like CIA doing spy work, taking on people in Russia and you would think that this could be a good movie, especially with it being like the last entry into the franchise, but you're just not invested whatsoever with the whole story piece of this movie. And again, I just could not be invested in the storyline. I honestly, if I'm being brutally honest, I just couldn't care less when it comes to the storyline. So with Die Hard, A Good Day to Die Hard, this one for me is gonna just go as a miss altogether. I probably would not watch this movie ever again if i'm going to be completely honest with you like doing a whole die hard marathon doing a die hard trilogy of movies this for me is definitely the indiana jones dial of destiny movie in the franchise like the last movie to come out luckily they didn't dishevel bruce willis's character and made him not worthy of the john mcclain tagline but it's just again the storyline and the way it just 
everything left off just felt very mad to me and again like i'm just one to completely miss if you're going to watch the die hard movies watching one to four then going to this movie as the last entry in the franchise you're just going to beat yourself up with this movie so yeah this is going as a category missed completely altogether here okay now for the next one we've got is the fourth entry into the franchise and so like i mentioned it's this one is going to be focusing on his daughter so like the this movie and the next movie the fifth movie it was focusing on him reconnecting with his kids because for some reason for the whole franchise is that you've got he connects with his wife then they separate he has that little interaction with his kids in the first movie but then you don't hear from them until like these movies and so it's just him reconnecting with everybody in the family it just makes it seem like he's such a terrible family member but with this one it's slightly more tolerable than the fifth movie just because this one when it comes to like the dynamic of Justin Long character which I thought was a great addition to the cast him and Bruce Willis like their chemistry bouncing off one another I feel like worked really well they had a very vital role in the storyline working well together and so I enjoyed that chemistry I enjoyed the duo together throughout the movie the villain I feel like maybe not as strongest in the franchise maybe not the most memorable but still comes off as a threat and you get a bit of backstory with that with the villain so i enjoyed that part of it but if i'll be completely honest with you this movie didn't feel like a die hard movie and it felt more like a mission impossible movie if anything because of this whole taking on the u.s cutting off the power all of that kind of stuff just felt more like a the stakes that Tom Cruise would go with in a Mission Impossible movie rather than a Bruce Willis stakes that he would go for in a Die Hard movie but I still enjoyed the movie nonetheless loved the fight sequences loved the third act the scale of like the whole chase sequences the car chase sequences in the third act was just batshit crazy but it did feel like a little bit over the top same with the fifth movie like the whole action set pieces with Bruce Willis kind of just made it feel like he was pretty much invincible throughout the whole movie but you can get past that because you get a good chemistry with him and Justin Long's character. His daughter wasn't really used as much as it should have been. Like you see her in the, pretty much the first scene of the movie and then after she just gets captured. But other than that, she's not really much sprinkled throughout the movie. But there were some great things to enjoy with this one. So for me, when it comes to Live Free or Die Hard, which honestly, I'm not a fan of that title either though, but, but that I can brush aside here. But when it comes to the fourth movie in the franchise, this one is going to go for me as good as a one-time watch because it doesn't hold up as the first three movies, but you have a great time with it, you enjoy it. So I really, really had a fun time with this one, but I would put it as a one-time watch. Okay, now for the next movie we've got here is the third entry into the franchise, Die Hard with Vengeance. And I gotta say, I really, really enjoyed this movie. The introduction of Samuel L. Jackson in this movie was just a breath of fresh air. The chemistry with the two of them, the one-liners that they have with each other, I think it really worked well. And again, the whole aspect of the movie, having Simon Says, having them go on little like side missions to prevent bombs from going off. And when the bombs do go off, some great action set pieces in that. What I really enjoyed is like the riddles that are sprinkled out throughout the movie each little section going from just wearing a sign that says some terrible things on it in Harlem to then going off to this train sequences to then the water gallon which honestly I still don't understand that concept of how they got to like two thirds of one water bottle to then the fifth like that's neither, neither here or there but I just enjoyed all of that being sprinkled throughout and then just going for like that third act two in the boat that was such a great sequence there just going from Samuel L. Jackson's point of view to John McClane's point of view so it really worked as a movie altogether so much enjoyment for me when it comes to this movie and the villain too tying it back to Hans Gruber in the first movie like the villain from the first movie I thought was a stroke of genius and it wasn't even like a revenge mission at the end of it it was just sort of stealing the gold so this really really makes it as like an enjoyable movie um, and i'm going to say this right now my second favorite movie in the whole franchise it just works so well with the direction that they're going to go with with even like the point of view on the point of where john mcclain is in his timeline in his life i think just works really really well and there's some excellent fight sequences too there was a one elevator sequence which reminded me of like the winter soldier from marvel when you've got John McClane and these four guys in the elevator and the way he just kills off all of them I just 
works so well. So yeah, a really, really fun, enjoyable, entertaining movie that I can go back and rewatch over and over again. So when it comes to Die Hard with Vengeance for the third movie, this one is going to go as extremely enjoyable because of that chemistry with Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson, because of the villain, because of like the little riddles that are sprinkled throughout the movie. It just makes it for an extremely enjoyable, entertaining, fun watch. And okay, now for the next one we've got is the sequel to the original movie. So Die Hard 2, you could argue you again with this one if it's a Christmas movie or not. It takes place I believe on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Everybody in the airports know Christmas songs sprinkled throughout and for me while I did enjoy this movie there was some weaknesses to it where comparing it to like the first movie you, Don McLean doesn't really get hands on more in this movie when he does in the previous movie so like he does get involved to try and stop like the planes from crashing for example or to like take on the villains and stuff but it's more of him going into the runway, then coming back to the airport, then going to the runway, then coming back to the airport, then taking on like the big bads in the third act. So it just wasn't as strong as it could have been compared to like the very first movie. But I still think this is a fun watch and an enjoyable, entertaining movie where you've got John McClane in the airport going behind backstage or whatever you want to call it in the airport, taking on killing these guys, him and that chief of police officer going back and forth and then even like that police officer having like his little story arc going from like this nonchalant police officer that just doesn't believe John McClane to then basically rooting for the guy and helping him out I just thought was really really cute and fun to watch and fun to see how his storyline is developing but the villain I would say also isn't as memorable as you would get from like the the third movie for example or definitely from the first movie the villain just felt like it was a weird political story arc that they're going to go with with these people like these military people rescuing this person from like a different country that's being brought into the US. I just thought that was a really weird sequence but I did enjoy like the intense edge of your seat moments when you've got like these planes just circling running low on fuel even that whole action set piece of these grenades going into like the cockpit where John McClane is only for him to just use the ejector seat and just blast off of the plane. Granted, CGI didn't look that great, but it really works for that time. And it just looked so great to just see the way he escapes these sort of tight scenarios that he gets himself into. While it may not be like the strongest in the franchise, it's still a great watch and one that you could definitely have a good time with. So when it comes to Die Hard 2, the sequel to the original movie, this one for me is going again, extremely enjoyable. Not for me as good as the third movie, just because I love that chemistry and like the riddles and everything. It was more hands-on with the villain in the third movie compared to the second movie. But I love that like the airport section, the airport sequence that you get. And also when John McClane does get involved and does take on the villain, it makes it for a great watch. So yeah, going is extremely enjoyable for me. Okay, now for the final movie, Movie, the original movie, the one that kicked off the whole franchise, the one that kicked off the big debate of whether it's a Christmas movie or not. I, for me, think it's a Christmas movie. It takes place on Christmas Eve. You've got Christmas songs. You've got Ho 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 written on dead bodies. So I definitely consider this a Christmas movie. It takes place on Christmas and it's one to enjoy for me. I would watch it every single year. So I guess I'm spoiling it right now of where I'm going to be putting it. But I just think that this is such a great, enjoyable action set piece of a movie. It's so simple. You've got John McClane going to visit his wife, who's at this Nakatomi building, having a Christmas party, once again, Christmas themed. And terrorists show up, take over the building, and he's taken on these bad guys one by one. The lines that he's delivering just throughout himself, how he ended up in this mess, how all he came for was just a few laughs, that kind of stuff. So it just worked so well. And it was a, I forgot how gory and bloody this movie was. Like you've got people getting shot in the head, you've got body parts flying left, right, and center. So this was definitely a gory movie, which for me, I'm all for it. The side characters that you get, like Al, the police officer, Argyle, the limo driver, make it for a great watch and you're invested in their characters. And then of course, Alan Rickman, may he rest in peace, is a fantastic villain and definitely my favorite villain of the whole franchise. He, his performances in terms of like his just casual nature, in terms of when he gets serious, the way he's able to trick John McClane, for just, even if it's just for like a brief moment, really has got that persona of a great diehard villain. He does a fantastic job, Hans Gruber, 
is one of the best villains for me in the whole franchise and even just that interaction briefly with John McClane and Hans Gruber I just loved what they did with that there are moments sprinkled throughout as he's taken on every single bad guy which I thought was really well worked when it comes to him taking on like the big guy the one that for me looks like Chris Jericho and if you understood that reference appreciate you there but the way he's like, tying his neck up to the chain the way he's able to like shoot one of the guy from under the table the way he's just able to just throw a computer with c4 down and just explode a whole level was absolutely phenomenal so yeah it just worked so well and then that third act that final battle the way he's able to use his clever ideas of sticking the gun on the back with tape and then just pulling it out and killing the security guard and then fighting with Hans Gruber I just thought it worked absolutely well this movie you just cannot go wrong with it I really recommend it to anybody that hasn't seen it because it's just so entertaining so enjoyable one of the better action movies that we had got from its time so Again, I've probably spoiled it already, but yeah, when it comes to the original Die Hard movie, this one is going to go for me as the yearly watch. I would watch this every single year in the month of December. You can honestly watch it throughout any time of the year because of the whole not a Christmas movie, but considering it takes place on Christmas Eve, it's got a lot of Christmas themes, Christmas music too and everything about this movie just works so well it's over two hours and like i mentioned earlier the it just breezes by like you don't even notice the runtime because it's just so enjoyable it just gets so quick into the action i think like after seven to eight minutes or even like 10 minutes that's when the terrorists start taking over so yeah it just makes for such a great watch so this is my list I'll be completely honest with you, it really does remind me of the Indiana Jones franchise, where for me the first three movies were so enjoyable to watch, the last two movies were just a bit of hit and miss, and I can watch the earlier movies over and over again. So this is my list of the Die Hard franchise, again I want to know your thoughts and your ranking in the comment section down below, where would you rank these movies, which one's your favourite, which one's your least favourite, I want to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. But that about wraps it up for this video here, again I want to thank you all so much for watching, if you do like this type of video, consider hitting that subscribe button but i thank you all so much for watching i thank you all so much for listening this is yk reviews again merry christmas happy new year peace